Hi guys, welcome back to Spelling and Word Study. My name is Mrs. Rhodes and I'm here to get you started on Unit 16, the E-L and I-L endings. Please take a second to gather your materials. You'll need your blue book open to page 101. You will also need some colorful pens, markers, or crayons. Remember, whatever I mark on my board, you should be marking on your page. Please save room for a key as well. If at any point I'm moving too fast, please pause the video and catch up. All right, so we have been looking at unstressed syllables at the end of a two syllable word. And we notice that unstressed syllable often has a schwa sound, which sounds like a. Uh. Last week, we learned about the AL ending in words like final. And we found out that the AL is unstressed and makes a schwa sound, ul, right? Last year, you learned the more common LE ending in words like bubble and um, table and words like that. Well, it turns out there are two more um, common ways to make that ul sound at the end of a word. And so that's what we're going to focus on this week. You'll notice all the words on our list end with either an il or an el. Il, el, le, and al all sound exactly the same. They all say ul. So I want you to listen for that sound as we read our list. Please repeat after me. April, channel, easel, fossil, gravel, jewel, label, level, sequel, shovel, shrivel, travel, tunnel, until, vessel. All right, you'll notice that I already went ahead and marked the syllable breaks with that orange vertical line. And I also used a green check mark to mark off the stressed syllable. All of our words this week have a stressed first syllable with the exception of number 14, until. In this word, our second syllable is stressed. And so even though it ends with I-L, it's actually making a short I sound, until, it, it, it. you can hear that. It sounds a little bit different from the I-L in April or the I-L in fossil, okay? So just keep that in mind. If you wanna pause the video for a second to mark your syllable breaks and stress syllables, you could do that now. All right, so what I wanna focus on next is the stressed part of each or the stressed syllable. Uh, throughout this year, we've talked about open syllables and closed syllables. And today I wanna draw your attention to some vowel team syllables. So let's choose a color and let's start with our open syllables. Remember an open syllable ends with one vowel that says its name. So in the word April, there's our open syllable there. We also see it in label, there's our long A. Sequel, there's our long E. And I guess that's it. So in our key, red box equals open syllable. And that open syllable is going to end with a long vowel sound. Okay, then we also have a bunch of closed syllables. Remember those um, have a vowel followed by a consonant. So in the word channel, there's our closed syllable. That A is making a short A, A sound. We see it again in fossil and gravel, level, shovel. Notice the O is making a short U sound there. 
shriv, trav, ton, and ves. Okay? Everything I put a blue box around is a closed syllable that contains a short vowel sound. Short vowel. Now, here's something you might be wondering about. Why is it that sometimes we double the consonant? So chan, null, we double the n. Fas, sol, we double the s. Tan, null, we double the n. So it seems like sometimes we double the consonant to show that it's a short vowel sound, but sometimes we don't. We didn't double anything in grav, lev, shove, shriv, or trav. It turns out that we never double the V in the English language. I can think of one exception. There's this word savvy, right? If you're savvy, you know stuff, you're pretty wise. That's a rule breaker. I can't think of any other word in the English language that has a double V. Just like we don't have double X's, we don't have double J's, there are certain consonants that never get doubled. And so in this case, it tends to be the V in grav, lev, shove, shriv, and trav. So just keep that in mind, okay? We never double the V. So we have open syllables, we have closed syllables, and then let's see what we have left. We have the EW in jewel. There's a vowel team that makes the OO sound. And we have the EA in easel. Okay, there's another vowel team makes the long E sound. So we're going to call this, instead of being an open syllable or a closed syllable, we call this a vowel team syllable, okay? Because those letters are working together to make um, a sound. All right, um, I want you now to notice the endings of our words. Most of our words this week end with E-L. We see it in channel and easel gravel, jewel, label, level, sequel, shovel, shrivel, travel, tunnel, vessel. Okay, all of these words use the E-L ending. So that's pretty common, not as common as the L-E. I feel like L-E is the most common, and then A-L, and then E-L. But then we also have a couple I-L endings. April, fossil. I'm not gonna mark that one because it's not making a schwa sound. So in here, the E-L ending has a schwa, and here, the I-L ending also has a schwa. This word is just here in contrast because it's a little bit different than all the other words. Okay, so um, the last thing I want to talk about with you guys is parts of speech. Um, so each word, you should know if it's a noun, a verb, or an adjective. So we're going to talk about that as we go through the meanings of our words. So if we start with April, that is a month of the year, right? So that's a person, place, or thing. So we're gonna put an N there. Notice April always has an uppercase A because it's considered a proper noun. It's the name of a specific month and therefore it must be capitalized. A channel, is a thing. It could be a channel on your TV. It could also be a waterway. 
okay? So a channel can be like a pathway that water follows. An easel is a thing. That's what we, um, we can hold up an easel. Or we, we set up an easel so we can paint. It can hold our canvas if we're painting. Um, it could have a whiteboard on it. So an easel is just like um, a stand, okay? A fossil is also a thing. If you dig up old, um, you're digging up and you find like an old dinosaur bone or you find a piece of rock that has a footprint in it, that's a fossil, okay? A fossil gives us clues to the past. Gravel is also a noun. That's what roads are made out of. Or sometimes people don't have a paved road. They just have gravel, so it's like little pebbles. A jewel is a thing. That would be like a diamond, a ruby. A label is a thing. And a level can be a thing. A level is a tool that we use um, to like if we're hanging up pictures and we want to make sure they're they're not crooked we can use a level so that's a noun a sequel is a noun so if you really love the first book in the harry potter series you're gonna love the sequel even more that's the book that comes next a shovel is a noun to shrivel is a verb um, if you spend too much time soaking in the tub, you'll notice your fingertips start to shrivel. They get wrinkly. Uh, pieces of fruit, when they go bad, they start to shrivel up like old grapes. So that's a verb, okay? That's the first verb we have. Turns out that most of our words that end with E-L and I-L are nouns. Travel is another verb, right? If you travel, it means you move from place to place. A tunnel is a noun, right? A tunnel can go through a mountain instead of over it or around it. Um, until, I believe, is a preposition. That's a whole different type of word. Describes where or when something is happening. And then a vessel is a noun. It's another word for a boat right? Or a container. A boat or a container. Okay, so if you think back to last week when we had words like local, fatal, equal, dental, vital, all of those words ended with A-L and most of the time they were adjectives. Most of our words this week end with E-L and they're usually nouns. So that might help you, okay? I think if you're not sure, chances are if it ends, if it's an adjective, you're gonna use A-L, and if it's a noun, you're gonna use E-L. If it's a verb, um, you're probably gonna use E-L. If it ends with a V, grab, shove, shriv, trav, lev, use the E-L, okay? You'll never see um, A-L or L-E after that V. So that might be helpful as well. Of course, the best way to improve your sp uh, spelling is to read, read, read. The more you see words spelled correctly, um, the easier it is for you to spell them correctly yourself. All right, that's all I have for you today. Good luck, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.